Hello everybody, this is Jontine again from Chapel Cottage Studio. If you watched my last video, it was a pastel seascape. And I thought that it might be fun to try the same seascape in a few different medium. So today I'm doing an acrylic seascape. We're going to be using the same picture here, which is of the coastal path descending into Morpha Bay, which is a lovely little place in between Pendine and Amroth on the Pembrokeshire coastal path. So I've got a canvas to start this. This is a 30 centimetre by 30 centimetre canvas. I've got three different brushes, which is about all I ever use. I've got a wide filbert brush. A filbert brush is the one with the curve across the top but it's flat and it's wide. I've got a smaller about one centimetre filbert and I've got a small round detail brush. We're not going to do huge detail so if you can, as you can see it's not a tiny brush. So those are my three brushes. I've got my palette here which is my preferred paper plate. I love these because you don't have to wash up, you just chuck them in the bin and they're biodegradable. Okay, and on my palette I've got acrylics, Galleria acrylics, which are one of my favourite brands. I've got a cadmium red, <laughs> can't remember what it's called, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, deep turquoise, ultramarine blue, can't remember the name, I'll come back to it. And the white is by a make called Golden. So it's a golden white acrylic. All the rest are Galleria. This is Permanent Rose, just came to me. So I've got a little bit, these are all the colours for our picture. Six colours with white. We don't even need black this time, we're going to make our own black. To begin, again, I'm looking at the picture the same as I did for the pastel one. And I'm going to make the same alterations. This is a little too close to halfway, the front banks, so I'm going to take them down a little bit. This is a little bit halfway-ish, so I'm going to sneak it back a little bit. And the path is going to come to the left a bit, so that the path will no longer be directly underneath that. This little dip will no longer be directly in the middle. You want to just change your pictures a little bit, compose and make them work for you. So, and my beginning, my very first thing is to draw out my picture. Little brush, little bit of my ultramarine blue and a bit of water. It doesn't matter what colour you use, this is purely habit. But I water it down like a watercolour. Then I'm just going to get my main lines in. So this front bank and the dip is going to go further to the left onto the bank on the right. I'm going to take the little headland back before halfway and take him across up there, that might be a bit steep. Put this edge of the sea in across there. Put my path in slightly off centre. Make sure that the bend in the path is really, really high up. It's only going to be about half an inch below the edge here and make sure that the front of the path is really wide. The back of the path is going to sneak in, let's get a bit more paint on there, sneak in behind that headland out of sight. And that's stage one. Lovely. Right, next we're going to put in the sky. Just the same as in the pastel seascape, this is a very boring sky. Ours is going to be really exciting. And we're going to introduce this stuff, acrylic flow medium. I used this for the first time a few weeks ago in class. And I was quite impressed with it, I like it. It just means that your acrylics stay wet a little bit longer, which is going to allow us to blend them a bit. So I'm going to put some of this into the centre of my palette. There we are, just a squish, and it's just a see-through gel that you mix with your paint. And then to start my sky, I'm going to use a bit of white, put a bit of this in it, 
The white is actually going to be very difficult for you to see because we're on a white background. So you're going to have to trust me a little bit here till I put the next colour in. Get some white clouds across the bottom. I want white where the sea meets the sky. Bear with me a minute, I know it's really hard to see. When we put the other colours on it will become apparent. I'll be quite quick with it. Okay, now I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow ochre with it and a little bit of that flow medium. Hello. And I'm going to add some yellow ochre around the edges here. If you heard a little voice then, it was somebody at the door. And I'm going to put the yellow on in places and I'm going to mix it with the white here and there make my white. You see I've got a very pale yellow ochre here where it mixes with the white. And I'm going to just make some decisions where I would like my yellow ochre. And you're doing a little dance across your picture. A little dance of balancing colours. I've got quite a lot of yellow ochre here and that's going to be balanced with a small amount on this side. And maybe just a little bit there. So again, it's this little dance throughout your picture of balancing your colour. Then I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to put on some white mixed with some of this wonderful deep turquoise. It's one of my fave colours at the moment. It's a new favourite colour for me. I discovered it a while back and I just love it. Into the gaps, overlap some of it, keep some of it separate. And it's definitely overlapping some of that white as well. And I think I might have a lot of pale blue on this side, deep turquoise, and a little bit on that side. Now the nice thing about this acrylic flow medium is that it's not going to dry yet. It's going to stay wet a little bit longer than acrylics usually does. I'm going to add some of my ultramarine blue and get a really, really strong dark blue. Oh, that's lovely, I like that. And I like it as well because it's a bit odd, it doesn't really go with that, but that makes me like it. Let's put a bit of this dark blue in. It was a bit, it was a bit equal then all over, so I've made a bit more of it on the right hand side. Okay, now I'm going to take change brushes to this great big one. This is a dry brush, there's no water on it. And what this is going to do is just scumble those edges together. A feather touch. If you do it hard, you're going to mix everything together. If you do a feather, feather touch, it's going to soften the edges and allow everything to just become soft and merged. So you're going to carry on, blend in the whole of your sky really, really gently. If everything's mixing together too much, then you're not being gentle enough. And if it's not mixing at all, then possibly you're not being hard enough. You see it just scumbles the edges together. So let's carry on that till we finish the sky. You can always add more colour. Most of my sky is nicely blended, most of my edges are softened. I'm going to just up some of the colours and I want to add a little bit of dark as well. So I'm going to use some of my white without any flow improver and I'm going to just get some sharp edges in there. Some clouds going over the top of the other ones. And you can use your fingers because the rest underneath is still nice and wet from that flow improver. Let's get a couple of sharp edges, a couple of little clouds that are definite. We don't want too much, it wants to be quite a, oh no, that's exactly the same as that side. Get rid of that with a bit more yellow. This is a lovely thing, you can just keep going, use your fingers to blend it in, use the brush to blend it in. 
big bit more yellow down there. Find your colours, find what you want. You can pick at it for ages, but try, try to keep it fairly simple. And not too fussy. We don't want a hundred different shapes. A few different ones is much nicer. I quite like that. My last shape I'm putting on is a little bit of this burnt sienna. I'm going to add a little bit of red, make it slightly pinky. And I'm just going to do a little area of a really dark colour. And a totally different colour. Just like we did in the pastel picture. Make a little section. Whoops, that's too much in a row, never mind. That's just ringing the changes a little bit and giving us a bit of a focus into the sky. I love using my fingers to blend, but you can use a dry brush like I did before. Just getting a little bit of a different colour in there, and maybe just to balance it, a little dot over on this side. There we are, and there's the sky finished. We're going to start the sea now. Oh, just before we do, by the way, as you can see, these are not colours that you would see in the sky. But remember, this is a painting. We're making it to be exciting. We're not making it to be realistic. OK? And these weird colours are going to go everywhere. First little tip. We want the top of the sea to be completely flat. Seas are horizontal. They don't go up and down in waves. They certainly don't go uphill. And I think this one does a bit. So always when I'm starting my C, this is a neat little trick. Ruler, let's measure where my C starts there. And let's make sure, because I don't think it's right on here. Oh, it just wants to go up a tiny bit on that side. Now my C will be level. And having marked that, I've got some masking tape. cut a piece off and let's go down to those marks stick your masking tape on then I can pick up my brush again my half inch brush into my white paint and let's make our first line across all the way across to the cliff there we are and then I can take that off And we've got a nice flat edge to the top of the sea. I'll have to get rid of that bit after, but that's okay. And we've got a nice straight edge to the top of the sea. So again, I'm starting with my white, which you may not be able to see very well. But I'm putting in the shine that I want on the middle of the sea. And I'm making some of the lines whiter, uh, wider, some of them narrower, and I'm making a white strip down the centre. Then I'm going into my ultramarine, a little bit of white, because it's a bit too dark. I want it quite striking, but I don't want it stupidly dark. And then I'm coming in from the sides, following my nice straight line. And again, it's not a delicate picture. We're not doing careful, careful, careful little lines. It's a nice loose picture so let's get in some loose shapes some of that blue and I'm going to go into my wonderful deep turquoise tiny bit of white with it and I'm going to break this up with the turquoise so I'm left with my white in the middle I'm not using any of that um, flow improver this time just paint take some of this across Everything is going horizontally. Every mark I make is going horizontal. Then I'm going back into my white, through the centre, through the other colours, and now they're all going to blend into each other just a little bit, but keeping that white centre where the light is coming down the picture.
Those are a bit too even, look, those lines. So let's just get rid of one of them, make sure I don't want even stripes. It's got to be random. A little bit more of my ultramarine. Break up those two colours. That's the beginning of the sea. Okay. This is a little bit too neat and tidy. So I'm going to use my little brush, a bit of water on the brush because I want to get some thinner lines. But I'm just dipping it in the water and then in the paint. And I'm going to make some squiggles come in across. And I'm trying to sort of hold the brush so loosely that it just does these little lines, little things happening. And also, I'm going to put on the twinkles, sparkles, whatever you want to call them. And they're no more than just bunging it on and maybe dragging it a little bit now and again. Nothing delicate about it at all. I tell you what's difficult though, the only difficult bit, and I do it myself all the time, is making sure that they're not all equal distances. And we don't want them right up here because this is the horizon. You won't be seeing them up there. Drag a bit through, make a couple of little lines by holding your brush as gentle as you can. I hold it between a finger and thumb so it's really, really loose. get on some of the lights in the sea and that will do nicely. There's the sea done.